Character, freedom, passion, and security. People ask me all the time if I'm a millionaire, and my answer is not yet, because I didn't know what I'm about to teach you right now. But what I do have is financial freedom, and that gave me the ability to walk away from a very secure and decent paying job to come out here and start to talk school. Three legs on the stool. One leg is for your pension, and one leg is for social security, and that would be your guaranteed income streams when you retire. You knew you had money coming in. The third leg was your responsibility for saving for extras and little things you might want to be doing, but you knew you were going to be okay in the long run. My parents, my grandparents, that worked out perfectly well. My generation, unfortunately, not working so well. Pensions the chances of you guys years. having pensions are about slim to none. A few might have it. Um, Social Security is unstable at best. National and consumer <coughs> debt's at an all-time high. And you're the first generation in 70 years not to have a net underneath you during retirement. So that means it's all up to you. We're going to assume Ashley has seen my presentation. And she leaves here and she is motivated because she knows she can secure her future. She's going to try and save $3,000 a year. And we're going to assume an 8% return over the long term. It's going to go up and down through the years. That is $8 a day. That's one fast food meal a day Okay, that she's going to try to save. She has $30,000 that she invested because she did this diligently from age 20 to age 30. And then I don't know what happened, but she didn't do anything else. John didn't know about this, and he started at age 30 when he started working for a company. He put in $3,000 a year, and he saved for 40 years. He put in $3,000, $120,000 of his own money, $90,000 more than Ashley. Who do we think has more money in the end? Ashley who put in $30,000 or John? Anybody just throw out some answers? You are right. Do you know why? Do you understand that starting younger and the way money doubles and compounds, the little bit of money paying yourself first now, small amounts of money over the long term, will make you secure in the long run. Ashley will have about a million dollars and she didn't put another penny in for, from the time she was 30. Hopefully, she will continue to do that and that will be a much larger number. John will have $840,000, but he put in $90,000 of his own, and he had to save an additional 10 years of $3,000 a year, and he's behind her. So it's the small amounts of money over the long term will change your future and where you go. I'll give you another example for these guys. If I offered them a penny a day, and I doubled it, one cent, two cent, four cents, eight cents, for 31 days, or I offered them a check for $100,000 each, and they could walk out of here with that today. They should have taken the penny because on the 31st day, I would have given them $10,700,000 plus thousand dollars, doubling a penny every day for 31 days. And I'm showing you this example because it's an accelerated view of how money works. That's what it's like investing. It starts out slow, it goes up and down, it's a little overwhelming, and then it starts to really multiply. It's about starting to think differently about your money. So you do have some money. You have it. You just don't know it yet. It's about a change in attitude, a change in action, and discipline in your life. Who do you guys think is the millionaire? Top house, bottom house? Bottom house. You guys are good. Are you all econ majors? Actually, you know what? I don't know. Either one of them could be millionaires. Either one of them could be in foreclosure. But what I will tell you is the top house probably has a lot more debt, possibly in foreclosure. The smaller house, there's a book called The Millionaire Next Door. And it's about all these unassuming Americans that live under the radar, and they pay themselves first. They take 10 to 15% off of every paycheck, and they put it away, and they don't live on it. <coughs> they just, it's gone, and they live on what's left. So they still can do a lot of things and have a quality life. However, they are saving as they're going, which is going to give them the millions in the end. So we're going to talk about how do you change attitudes? How do you start to take control of this? Well, what I heard as a financial planner was I don't have enough money to save. I worked with people who made $10,000 to $10 million, and they all said the same thing. But here's what I'm going to tell you. This is exactly what I told them. If you don't change the way you think about this, you never Very will. easy examples you've probably heard a million times. Buy a 24-pack of pot instead of stopping at the convenience store and paying $1.49 per drink. Use coupons. Pack your lunch a couple You can even save a thousand a year right now. You are doing better than the average and you're going to be setting yourself up for success. How do marketers get you? Did you know that if you walk in the store and you try on a shirt for $100 and you don't like it, you have absolutely no problem 
hey, that shirt back up. It has been proven if you take that exact same shirt that's marked down to $30, you will second guess your own judgment and potentially and probably will buy it, even though you probably really don't even like it that much. Marketers live <coughs> to get you to spend money. The last one is my friends will have all the cool stuff. Do what I do. I go to their houses. <laughs> and you know why? Because down the road, they're going to be coming to your house. Too long, because I know that's not everybody's mind. What do you do? Well, question I get asked all the time. Should I take the longest time in the repayment plan, which is approximately 20 years at this point? I heard they're talking about upping that to 25 or 30 years. My question is, what is the long cost to you if you take the longest term? Do you want a chimp on your back or a gorilla? And the visual of that is you have to think about, and again, we talk about how to go about doing this. If you can get that paid off in a shorter amount of time, you've got freedom again. You've got room to do other things, to plan for the things you want. If you go with the gorilla philosophy, do you realize you may be paying your student loans while your kids are starting college? Do you really want to carry that for all those years? So there are ways to work on student loans. And I absolutely believe in student loans. My kids have them. It's the best investment you'll ever make in yourself if you're using and going to school and really succeeding with it. But you still need to figure out how to get them down so you can continue to go forward. So the real financial concern that you have is running out of money in all reality. When we do planning, we start at the age of 92. We assume everybody's living to 92, and honestly, for your generation, it's probably going to be longer. So if you want to retire at 65 or 70, you've got from 65 or 70 to 92 at minimum if all goes well. Where is your money? You have no net underneath you. There's, there, you have to start to think about it. So again, by taking small amounts of money, changing the way you look at life and things you're doing, you can start to set yourself up for success now and not cut the quality of your life over the long haul. Healthcare costs, we have no idea what's going to happen. And obviously inflation is something that we're factoring in all the time. So again, the longer term you have the money growing for you, the better you're going to do. You're going to be well. The choice is going to be up to you. Are you going to continue not thinking when you're purchasing clothes, DVDs, cell phones, electronics, fast food? Or are you going to start to think of yourself first and then buy the things you want, which is absolutely fine. Everybody should do that. So the question comes down to, are you guys living the dream? Who wants to live the dream? Who wants freedom? Who wants to be able to do this? Financial freedom gives you the option to walk away from a job and do something you love more. It gives you the opportunity if your parents get ill and you want to take time off of work and help them. Someone wants to go teach English in China. You can do these things. You're not stuck with a headset on the rest of your life that you don't want. Ownership. Own your houses. Own your cars. Work the same way with the house that you do with the student loan. Get it paid off ahead of time. Then nobody can take it from you. Options. Again, we just went through a ton. Mental freedom. Let me tell you what everybody tells me when I'm talking to them and they're stressed out about money. I don't want to go to the mailbox because it's filled with bills. It's, it's a nightmare. I don't answer my phone anymore because bill collectors are calling all the time. I can't even sleep at night. Now the sheriff's coming with the foreclosure sign. You can avoid all of that, and you don't think it's going to happen, but it happens so quickly. It's really about just changing the way you think with the little behaviors, and you don't have that. Then you could be thinking about, what's my next vacation? Where am I going? What do I want to do? Wow, my kids have soccer tonight. I'm going to go to their game and coach. It's a much lighter, happier, secure way to live. And last, fun and adventure. Whatever your passion is, you should be living it every day. That is the goal for Generation Millionaire, that you feel good about your life. So who wants to live the dream? Come on, let's stand up. I want everybody standing up. Come on, stand up, live the dream.